Some men like to fight and curse. They smoke and drink and yell. Leave you flat or even worse, they stay and make life hell. But my man is gentle, as soft and sentimental as any lace adorned a valentine. He's a queer one, that man, oh my. Hello, patrons, and welcome back to a new Schmigadoon Breakdown. I'm here with my wonderful video editor, Liz Aston. Liz! Hello, hello, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to have you here because we're talking about Schmigadoon episode three, Cross That Bridge. Oh, yeah. Oh, gotta, my goodness. You got to cross it right now. I mean, Keegan Michael Key needs to cross that bridge. Like, he's he, he going to get shot if he don't. Oh, he he going to get shot. <laughs> what did you think of this episode? Um, uh, yeah, specifically, like, is Keegan Michael Key's character likable anymore? <laughs> I'd say he redeems himself later on which we'll get into next week obviously but yes um this episode i wanted to you know i said in episode one i said he gave me like christian for midsummer vibes uh yes. the midsummer vibes were on point this time <laughs> it's a lot it's just like i understand his aspiration i understand he doesn't want to try i understand he just wants to get out but i mean i do but also he's a prick he, he's a dick yeah. Like, I, I don't think I would want to hang out with him as a human being. No, um, me either. So we had a flashback at the start of this episode, and I've forgotten what it is already. It's, I, it's the wedding flashback. Yes. Okay, where this they is talk where about it really the, solidified um, that he's a dick. Weird last name feeling. I forgot what it was originally. Cause it, yeah. be- it became the Skinner feeling. Yeah, the Skinner feeling. Which sounds it like was... an STD. Um, I really think <laughs> I, about it. I think it was supposed to, but let's just say this, Liz, if you're in the situation that Cecily Strong was in, um, where she's a bridesmaid forced to do like the cha-cha slide, but more complicated and your spouse would not come up to dance with you and at least, you know, make the attempt. I feel like it's like that relationship's ending that evening. He's, if, if we're living together, he's sleeping on the couch and he is to really? think, he has to think about what he's done. I feel like she has the most patience I've ever seen in a character since, I guess, like any female sitcom character from the 80s. Like, oh, yeah, he gets way too many chances. Oh, yeah. I understand his personality is kind of cynical and he doesn't want to embarrass himself doing like the discount cha-cha slide, which seemed way too complicated, whatever it was. Um, you know what it reminded me of? The Cupid Shuffle. I don't know yeah. if that was a thing where it's like, left, yeah. right, left, left, or is that it? Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, it's the dun, keep dun, 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 It's the keep it shuffle. Where everyone somehow knows the dance except for me, and then uh, you know, my date's like, "Why are you embarrassing me? It's prom." <laughs> and I'm like, "I listen to musicals. What do you think I'm doing here?" I listen I to Sondheim, old... not whoever this guy is. <laughs> I can give them an old one-two box step if they want, but nothing else. And nothing like breaking out the box step at prom. <laughs> Man, I did though. I was oh, that God. kid. I, I didn't break out any steps in prom. So. Did you go to prom though? I, I did. I went with my I went to my senior prom with my gay friend because oh. no one else would go with me. Man, that's that's lame. Eh, it's fine. It was cool. Did you have fun though? I had fun. I had fun. Did you do the Cupid Shuffle? I don't think the Cupid Shuffle was played, but I do remember our slow dance song was Thinking Out Loud by Ed Sheeran. I remember you wanna know what our slow dance song and this is simultaneously the most detroit thing and also the least detroit thing what is it it was baby you're a song you make me want to roll my windows down and cruise i heard that in a mall a couple days ago and i wanted to burn my ears literally i i i did i me and my date who is still my girlfriend now now um we're laughing our asses off so much we couldn't focus on dancing <laughs> Like, what the? Once again, Detroit, but it's run by a bunch of like white people, and so like, black. who picked this song? Yeah, that's giving me flashbacks. To my eighth grade dance, and they played Friday. People don't. Adults don't get irony. Yeah, they thought it was a hit song in eighth grade. Um, it wasn't. <laughs> we hated it. What? 
it gives what gives off Friday energy, but isn't Friday is Call Me Maybe, which was everywhere when that oh, song came yeah. out. I think that was also at the dance. I don't remember though. How do you dance to Call Me Maybe? I know we're on a tangent. We're gonna circle back to Schmigadoon we'll, eventually, we'll get to it. but uh, I don't know. I can't dance like, though, so I, I there's guess a reason could... I did stage crew in high school. So I guess you could like Vogue, like I just met you and this is crazy, but here's my number. So call me maybe. <laughs> you guys can't see this. Jess is doing some very good voguing. I just want to <laughs> confirm that to the audience at home. <laughs> it was ten out of ten. It was ten out of ten um, voguing. Madonna's jealous. But then I'm surprised at how Cecily Strong comes back so quickly. Yeah. After he joined her for this event and would not stand by her side, she's still holding his hand in the car, which was weird. Yeah. Um, I didn't like that. She also, he's like, all right, let's bitch about this wedding together, which, yes, everyone does that. Yes, it's absolutely. great. I love bitching about uh, weddings. I love bitching about events in general. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm going to a wedding next week. So. I got a wedding this weekend that I'm shooting. Oh, wow. I don't do it when I shoot weddings because that, that's like a different line because I don't always know them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A unless uh, one wedding videography I did, I had a, you know what a giant Ronin M kind yeah. of gimbal is. I had one of those and they had choreographed dance numbers. Um, oh, God. Like the daddy daughter and the mom son were all perfectly choreographed and i'm like keeping up like damn this is like i'm shooting a musical number right now <laughs> this oh, is, what is this la la land and it wasn't cringe um yeah it was an all african-american wedding so they actually knew how to dance so it oh, looked good. fucking oh, cool as hell like i'm just like oh, yeah. man and then the fog machines start coming on and i was like oh my god i i will say highly recommended i i did a great wedding video for them oh, I, I edited wedding videos for a time, and I made fun of them, but I was just the editor, so I was allowed to make fun of them. Yes, they, I mean, they will you, never you, get all me. The, you get all the stuff. They will never meet me, as far as I'm concerned. So I'm just like, <laughs> I made fun of all their ice sculptures. Why do you get an ice sculpture for a wedding? It makes no sense. I won't get into um, it. Yeah, um, yeah um, make a cheese sculpture, and then yeah. everyone just digs in. That's way better. Or do the flower flower wall thing with your names on it. That's cute. Yeah, do that. Do cute things. Do cute Don't waste things. money on ice sculptures. Exactly. This is a PSA from Patreon with cheese. Yes, do not get ice sculptures at your upcoming wedding, if whenever you have it. Yes. Um, so we see Cecily Strong wake up. She has gotten dicked down by Aaron Tveit. A, a girl's dream. I mean, and he's convinced that he, his super sperm has impregnated her. Yeah. Despite her having an IUD. Yeah. She paid a coworker to put a tube in her uterus. Um, I love it. I love how direct and specific she is. Um, and that continues on to the next episode very well. Yeah. I love her attitude about this. And his just dumb guy himbo-ness where... Oh, yeah. It's Billy Bigelow's like, I'll go out and take it or steal it or bag it or whatever that line is. Yeah, like that's um, all, over... all the same thing. Yeah, except they go in like every single adjective oh, or yeah. synonym with uh, stealing. Then he keeps going. It's a great gag. Oh, yeah. Also, and then I, Aaron Tveit kind of leaves the show. He still has the pants on the entire time. He still has his high-waisted pants. Mm -hmm. which is just commitment also i do love she takes the bacon as she's leaving but then she throws <laughs> it out immediately before even just smelling it and then just immediately chucking it into a trash can <laughs> like i don't know what was in that bacon but i don't want to know also there's a giant continental breakfast he cooked which would have taken <laughs> hours in the real world like there's like but we're in musical logic yeah, like, he has a pan that he's making pancakes on that's, like, a normal saucepan. He's already made, like, 50 of different flavors in the morning. Yes, that's um, impressive. it is insane musical theater logic. Um, I love it. I liked a touch where as soon as she left the the, the building they were in, um, you could hear the muffled songs of, like, orchestration and all that from inside the building. He's still going. Also, like, and he's just like, it's a daughter. It's completely different. And it's just, like... Uh... I mean, that's a carousel reference. It's oh, okay. a direct carousel reference. Um, I did not know like, that. 
I guess it's time for me to explain some mansplain charis or musical splain, you know, because it's not like it's not fun to be ripped off. Um, let me musical explain this to you. So Carousel, Billy Bigelow has this big soliloquy, one of the best songs in the show. Um, yeah. Where he's like, I, my boy Bill, I will see that he's named after me. And he has like all these verses about, man, I just really want to have a boy and I'd be a great father to a boy because boys aren't work. They're just fun. But oh my God, I if what if I have a girl? The direct line is, you can have fun with a son, but you got to be a father to a girl. Oh, okay. Got it. Um, so, and that's when he realizes, oh, I can't just be an idiot layabout guy okay. if I have a daughter. Oh, okay. Um, and that proceeds his actions into act two, um, yeah. where he does a public suicide, um, goes to heaven, and is sent down to meet his daughter and immediately smacks her in the face. Carousel. Carousel, American everybody. American classic. Carousel, everybody. Dear but you Lord. know what? It wasn't like he hit her. It was like he kissed her hand. It was like being hit by an angel, to quote Andrew. Oh, God. <laughs> that's, one, that, that's the spinoff of Touch by an Angel. No one wanted. <laughs> um, yes. So while that's going on, um, Keegan Michael Key is trying to bring Dove Cameron over the bridge, um, yeah. because he was forced into proposing. Um, and I will say this is probably Dove Cameron's best scene in the entire um, series, yeah. where he basically dumps her, and then she has this very intense sobbing. <laughs> she's she's good at crying. I've seen her cry in a few things. She's very good at the crying. I just, so you've seen Descendants. I have. I have seen the first one and about half of the second one. How, what is her personality in those movies? Well, she's playing Maleficent's daughter, who is yes. Kristen Chenoweth. So. so she's a lot more toned down, a little less ditzy. She is. She's very. She's very tough as nails. Um, the classic. I'm not like other girls. Tumblr chick. In oh, a lot of ways. Okay. But then she meets a cute boy. Um who uh, makes her feel things. Uh, Why the... is it never meeting a cute girl that makes you feel things? I don't know. She has cute friends, too. So it's just like, what? Like, okay. But anyway, this this love interest is so bland, I don't even remember her name. But uh, Dove Cameron basically, like, is tough as nails. And then she is, she's using the cute boy to get the magic wand, the fairy gallery's magic wand, so she can give it to her mom. But then she ends up, like, falling in love with the boy, because that's what happens when schemes happen at Disney movies. But, yeah. It sounds like you're just describing the plot of Once Upon a Time to me, to be honest. Yeah, except for this one is has more singing and is stupid. <laughs> oh, okay. Also, the production that's... values are even lower than early Once Upon a Time. Oh my god, that can get lower than Once Upon a Time? Yeah, like, the Maleficent costume looks like it was bought at a costume shop. For a lower price. And Kristen Chenoweth is just trying her best. And Kathy Najimy is also there. I forgot her part, though. She's also in it. Um, but yeah, it's very strange. Also, the son of Krell DeVille is afraid of dogs. Yeah, but may he rest in peace. May he rest in peace. He was an excellent actor. He did excellent with whatever that part was. It was very underwritten. That is the did... one thing I know about Descendants, is that Krellville's son sadly died in real life. Yes, he did an excellent job. Uh, but yeah, Descendants is a fun movie if you don't want to think for in nine, under 90 minutes. But also in the third one, they get married. Like, Dove Cameron and the love interest, even though they're canonically like Ew. 17 or 18. Well, believe. that's kind of the thing about Dove Cameron in this. She is a very nebulous age. Um, <laughs> they make a lot of jokes about how oh, yeah. no one knows how old she is. Yeah. She's my age, I think. She's our age, just about. She looks 16. Yes. So it's I perfect like the... casting. I like the throwaway line um, <laughs> of member Liesel from The Sound of Music. She was 16 going on 29. <laughs> I love that. Like, she looked 30. Um, but Aaron Tveit has a repri reprise of his song, You Can't Tame Me, about how she has tamed him. Yeah, he's a new now, man. That's what they've had sex once. I mean, I don't know. I... I don't, I don't, th uh, um, let's not have that conversation. Yeah. Let's just move on past <laughs> that. That's true. I was like, oh, no. Yeah. Um, but they've been kicked out of their inn um, because Keegan-Michael Key has been trying to 
drag every woman in town across the bridge, which looks um, bad. He does no, wait, literally. That, that was before he did all that. What, were they kicked out of the end before that? Yeah, they were kicked out of the end before that because Mildred Layton doesn't like them for being, uh, like, progressive. Oh, I thought it was because he tried to have sex with a minor and she had sex with a bad boy. That that was also it, but also just because she doesn't like them, I don't think. And yeah, doesn't like their, their multicolored catch sting. Yeah, and then he does the cross the bridge thing and has yes. the only consequence is Cecily Strong doesn't like him anymore. So. What did you think of that song, Cross the Bridge? I, I've had it stuck in my head for about a day and a half now. So. It's weird that it is like a gospel style, like it's an upbeat, strange. like Hercules kind yeah. of gospel sound. Give me the Muses vibes. Yeah, but not in a good way. Like, I don't know. I wasn't into this song as much. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't mind it. I thought it was a good, I thought it was a half decent number. It had a good, lot of good dancing. It had great dancing. It wasn't my favorite that. of all of them. Corn Puddin' is probably still up there. In terms of... Yeah, Corn Puddin's a hard one to top. But yeah, you can't top Corn Puddin', really. I didn't um, mind it. I liked the featuring of the um, not none of the main cast. It was just the background actors with a featured song, which I did I, appreciate. I did like the transition where Keegan Michael Key is excited because at least it'll mean it'll move faster if there's a song number. Yeah. <laughs> like the practicality of a song number in this situation. Yeah, like yeah, let's just make it a number. It's fine. I don't like this, but whatever, we'll yeah. do it. I will say the um, entire scene was still incredibly sexist. I'm not discounting oh, that. Incredibly Intentionally sexist. so, though. Intentionally incredibly sexist. Though I did appreciate how he did cross the bridge with a very old woman, like right at the end. <laughs> gotta try. Gotta can't leave any stone unturned. Martin Short. Martin Short will yell at you. Yeah, Martin Short Leprechaun needs to come back and do more yelling. <laughs> I hope he comes back. I've got a bad feeling that he might not. Yeah, I want him to come back. He's in Martin the, Short, come back. He's in the opening credits, so he should come back. So is Jane Krakowski, but we haven't seen her yet. That's true. I think she's in, like, episode five of Twitter is oh, anything gosh. to say about it. We've got we've got a bunch waiting. I mean, we got a long ways to go. Oh, yeah. um, we did not talk about He's a Queer One, That Man of Mine, and yes. Harada's song about Alan Cumming, who might be... A homosexual. I'd say he is a homosexual, but I um, mean, But Aunt, Aunt Harada just wants to get dick down so badly, she and does. Alan Cumming isn't going to do it. No, she's not. No, he's not. He's not doing it. Also, his, their house is full of just, like, statues of men. men performing sex acts on each other. And Cecily Strong's like, this is what I was like in high school, which is, like, <laughs> very on point. <laughs> Was it relating to the sex acts, or was it relating to her being attracted to the gay guy? Being attracted to the gay guy. Is that a thing that girls experience? There, there is an idea that, like, the gay the, the gay dude who isn't completely out is less intimidating than a straight dude who's just being a douche all the time. Like, he's the gay guy's the guy's always nice to you, so you, like, kind of get a crush on him. Okay, I'm not friends with many heterosexual men. I think Andrew might be the only one. Um, so... <laughs> I'm friends with one, um, and I'm dating him. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, it does... I don't understand why men are such dicks to women if yeah. they want to be with them at some point. Yeah. There, what is... There's just an, the point? There's an idea that just, like, when a guy makes fun of you, it means he likes you. Like, a guy pulls on your ponytail in class, and it's like, oh, he has a crush on you. Like, it's not he's just being what? mean. Like, that's what he, that's what teachers will tell That's what some teachers and adults will tell you when you're a little girl. Like, oh, he has a crush on you, and all this other crap. Like, when I was in third grade, I think one of the my classmates asked me out as a joke or something. And, what the fuck? And then he started date, dating in quotation marks, my friend two days later. So, we weren't actually Men dating, are disgusting. though. We were in third freaking grade, so no one knew what dating was. We just cared about were the swings available. I guess it's a little different. Because um, I had the I dare you to do something to that kid experience a lot, but it was a lot more unpleasant. Yeah. Like, it was, I dare you to grab his ass, and then my ass would just got, get grabbed out of nowhere while walking through the hallway by some girl who would run away. And I'm oh. like, what the fuck just happened to me? <laughs> oh. Like, it was the most strange experience in a middle school hallway that I did not ask for. What the hell? I hate middle school. Middle school is such a weird time where the hormones are coming out and not everyone's, 
like hitting the yeah. finish line or like the midway at the same time. So very strange. Like everyone's a mess. Yeah, I was, I was thirteen in middle school when the wonder when One Direction started being popular, and everyone's like, "Why don't you like One Direction?" And just like because they're telling me I'm beautiful, so they can like make me feel good, but they're not talking to me. They're talking to everybody. I was 13. But that's what makes you beautiful, is yes. that you don't know you're beautiful. But now that I know I'm beautiful, I'm no longer beautiful One Direction. Thanks. So, yeah. So, they they like the self-conscious girls. They do. Is that the point of that song? That's the point of most of One Direction's early discography. They Gross. They want their girls to be semi, like, they don't know what's up. So, except for little things, where they get in- so incredibly specific that it's really bad. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to stick with my Jonas Brothers who just sing about the year 3000. Not yeah. much has changed, but we're, and we're burning we live up underwater. For you, baby. Didn't they do... Oh, no, that was the Nick Jonas solo where he's like, I'm not going to say you're sorry. Was that, that was him, right? I think so. Or is that, is that Justin Bieber? Didn't he do that sorry song? Maybe. I don't... Maybe. I'm not, I don't really listen to Nick Jonas' solo discography. There were so many pop songs out there where it's like, remember, like, tonight I'm fucking you. Oh, yeah. And then in the radio version, it's tonight I'm you. I think it's a tonight I'm loving you or something yeah, like or that. Yeah, or something. It's like the for, or it's, forget you versus fuck you. Yes, fuck you's better, but fuck CeeLo Green, he's a rapist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, yeah, I agree. Um, Schmigadoon is much better. Yes, Schmigadoon. Across the board. Yeah. Um, what do you think your favorite song of this episode was between the three? I would say it's probably the first one. To the right, to the left? You know the... No, no, one? no, not the... No, the Aaron Chivate... Yeah. yeah, obviously You've it's You've tamed me. It's the, it's the fake Cha-Cha Slide. It's my favorite song of all time. Uh, I mm-hmm. would say it's You Tame Me. Yeah, I'd say it's You Tame Me. Because I, I think he Angevate does it really well. I mean, I th- we just released our Moulin Rouge episode today. And in that episode, I bring up that Aaron Tevate, because of the way he acts, it, it is impossible for anyone to have chemistry with him. I have yeah. yet to see a single person have chemistry with him, which is why he's tended to play off the pretty boy persona where he isn't the love interest. He's always put into the Andra role or the um, ghost boy role in Next to Normal. He's never poised as the romantic lead except in Moulin Rouge where he's garbage. Yeah. He is very bad. He's not an idealistic. He is. He has the cynical eyes that he cannot turn into I- idealism where here it works because he's not meant to have chemistry with Cecily Strong. Yeah, he's supposed to be completely vacant from the entire situation. He's supposed to just see her as a thing to pursue, not an actual person. What would you... you, What what would be uh, the the evil himbo? What is the reverse of a himbo? Where there's nothing behind the eyes, but it feels sinister. I would say, like, maybe a Judd from Oklahoma. Uh, Maybe. Maybe... Hmm. It's hard to define More sociopathy. A... Yeah, that's sociopathy. It's hard to define an evil himbo because you have to f- a- also first of all find them attractive, but also find their- also hate them because they're evil. So. Like they're stupid and sinister. Like stupid, sinister, and attractive, like all at the same time. Yeah, it's a only... weird line to walk. The only one I can think of is from a horror movie. Only because what is that, it? That's um Hush. The killer is played by John Gallagher Jr. Oh, Ooh. he is a tra- yeah, yeah. I have a he, giant he crush on, so that's the only thing I could think of because I'm supposed to like be scared of him because he's gonna kill the deaf lady, but also he's incredibly hot. So, um, I'm very conflicted. in our Spring Awakening episode, Grace Aki, you know Grace, um, I love she's her. Wonderful. I love her. Um, she told a story about meeting John Gallagher Jr. and hugging him a little too long, and his wife looking at her real, real funny. <laughs> <laughs> I really love that. And I, I, I'm... so, if you ever meet him and he's near his wife, count the seconds. Make sure you're not there too long. Yeah, I will. I will make sure the hug isn't too long. <laughs> so that will... can't have too long a hug with John Gallagher Jr. I'm no, sorry. his wife will kill me. No, it's just... murder you in your sleep. Yeah, I can't think um, of any musical evil himbos though. No, no. Maybe I wouldn't like even Rol- call Judd a himbo because Judd's never sexy and he's a little. No. Maybe Rolf the Nazi a... for some people? Yes, that is evil himbo. You got it. Yeah. You found it. Aaron yeah. Tveit would be a great Rolf the Nazi in The Sound of Music. Absolutely. 
or if, maybe the 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 rich guy, the rich guy that fucks both Sally and Michael oh, York yeah. in the film version Max, of Cabaret. Uh, Max Million. Max Million. He's an e- evil himbo. He is. He also sucks. No, I like He's... I like the character. It's just they do nothing with him. So. He just he leaves the movie. He goes back to his home planet. You no, know, they the, they just find a note by their bed that's just like, oh, Max is I, Max left because he has family stuff. He doesn't even say goodbye. Thanks for the holes. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for fucking both of us and ruining our relationship. Bye. I don't know. They seem they seem to uh, to come back pretty quick. Only well, had to get punched by a Nazi. You're right. Maybe, maybe, nah. Um, I think my favorite song is actually "He's a Queer One," that man of mine, because I love Anne Harada and she gets the joke so well and nails the scene. Oh yeah, no, that's yeah. I, I forgot about that one for some reason. That's also up there. I think the only one I didn't like was "Cross the Bridge," the bridge crossing song. But even that, you had positive. Like, I don't think any song in this show so far has been bad. Yeah, I I think all the songs are good. It's kind of just a scale of like how good. Because, like, Corn Puddin' was excellent. I don't think we'll ever hit the heights of Corn Puddin' ever again. No, Corn Puddin' was excellent, and Cross the Bridge was, had positives. It's just, it, there's parts of it that just don't completely work. It's also, it's also just gross and weird, like, the premise of it. So, you have to get past that. Yeah. I had to watch it, it is, twice to enjoy it, so. It is objectifying women. Yeah. Um, and is this the episode where we tease Ariana DeBose coming in next episode? Yes. Yeah, we see her drop off stuff at the uh, the pre the church. Mm-hmm. Yes. I love Ariana DeBose. Um, and he, she's got a thing. Um, we she's much more important in the next episode, but I do want to bring this up about her. She's an enigmatic actress, meaning with some of these actors, even very good actors, I get a sense of how they'd probably be in real life. Yeah. Um, based on how they perform in film and TV and theater. Um, like, let's say Alan Cumming. In every one of his performances, even outside of interviews, I've got a vibe for how I think he'd be in real life. Ariana DeBose has played such drastically different performances in everything I've ever seen her in. I have no oh, idea yeah. what she's like in real life. Oh, yeah. Like, from Hamilton to The Prom to this. Oh, yeah, nothing. she was in The Prom. I completely forgot. Yeah, and rumor is she might be in Chicago um, when that comes back. Um, that's a big rumor. But I'm excited to see her in West Side Story and maybe see some of her real version because I feel like so far we we haven't seen anything that's really close to who she really is so far, which would be interesting. Yeah, I think she she's a chameleon. She plays a lot of parts. Yes, which, which is why I think she'd be a perfect alphaba. Yeah, she'd be great. Like Dove Cameron and Aaron DeBose in the wicked movie hell yeah give it to me inject it into my veins inject it in my veins please i don't want maybe you'll agree with me i have no interest in amanda seyfried as glinda i have no interest in amanda seyfried in most things uh depending on what it is i don't even think she's a bad actress it's just that that feels incorrect yeah like it doesn't it doesn't feel like good casting i don't think she can play that part like that personality type she plays it in mamma mia but Mamma Mia doesn't have Oscar-worthy acting. Uh, what are you talking about? Meryl Streep's in there? <laughs> Cher's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, Yeah, I don't... Uh, she played it in Mean Girls. That is the closest she's ever gotten to yeah. the Galinda spirit, but that was 20 years ago. It's also... Karen is like an exaggerated Glinda. Because Glinda, yes. despite her exterior being like kind of ditzy, she's way smarter than people give her credit for, in a way. Yes, I, I agree. Th- I saw Wicked like years ago when I was like fourteen, so I may be not recalling this fully, but you know, it's the growth. She has to play the growth. Um, I just don't think. Uh, maybe this is poor. I just think Amanda Seyfried's been a little too oversaturated for us to see her disappear into the role. Yeah. Where I kind of want some newbies and some well-known like character actors to support it. Because I think with Wicked, the title is the selling point. Everyone knows Wicked at this point. So you kind of have the leeway of putting a few unknown actors as the leads. Yeah. Yeah, it's your mom's favorite musical. It's everyone's mom's favorite yeah. musical. Except maybe like And Phantom. everyone knows The Wizard of Oz. Just mark it off of The Wizard of Oz knowledge and fuck it. That's true. Yeah, everyone knows Wizard of Oz. 
Um, but on that note, I think we've wrapped up this episode of Schmigadoon. What's your cheese rating on the episode, Liz? Ooh. Ooh, I did some I did some cheese googling today because Ooh. I was running out of cheese ideas because I can only think of like three cheeses off the top of my head. So I looked up some. I found an article about romantic cheeses, so I'm just going to pull from that until I can find better ideas. So, we're going to... I'm going to give this episode a nice ricotta. Some nice, soft cheese. Gets the job done. It's not always great, but it gets the job done. I think that's a good choice. I'm going to do Parmesan, because Ooh. that kind of tends to bind things together when you put it into, like, a pasta sauce or something. Yeah. Um, so, and these are kind of the episodes that are kind of the centerpiece, the, the glue that's holding this show together so far. Yeah. Maybe that's some bullshit. Let us know in the comments. How are you liking this breakdown of Shmiga did to do? And we're getting we're halfway done with the show. Pretty oh, wow. yeah, halfway done. Yeah. Um. So what should we do after this? I know yeah. we've suggested a Once Upon a Time cast, but I have zero interest in that. How about Smash or something? Smash on, Crazy Ex Girlfriend. I love Crazy Ex Girlfriend. I feel like we'd just be too positive there. Yeah, you can never be too positive about which. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah. Um, but leave us your suggestions. Um, Liz, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap this up? Um, go cross that bridge. Mm-hmm. Go cross it um, now, but, but not with Keegan Michael Key. Do it with no, someone. No, not else. with him. Do it with Cecily Strong. Yeah, or uh, even Chris and Chen with. Maybe she'd start smiling. Yeah, we love Chris and Chen with smile. Yeah, I love it when she smiles. Yeah. How about you put a smile on here at home? We'll see you next time on Patreon with Cheese. Say goodbye, Liz. Bye, everybody. Some men stumble home at dark, want dinner and dessert. Other men have eyes that spark at every passing skirt. But my man loves cooking. I've never caught him looking at other gals more young, petite, or fine. He's a queer one, that man, oh my. This was literally me in high school. Show me any other man more tender or expressive. I only wish that nightly he were slightly more aggressive. There it is. Sometimes it may seem like he is too good to be true. Like there's a man that I can't see just aching to break through. I wish I could free him so I could finally see him the way he truly is and let him shine.